it's a, a, a big difference between tax preparation, which is recording history, and ta- which is reactive, looking back, and tax planning, looking forward. That's where all the money, chunks, thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions in otherwise uh, in taxes that would otherwise be paid can be saved. You can save a fortune in taxes, even if you have a large IRA or 401k, if you t- if you do the planning that's available. You know, the whole point is you have to make the tax code work for you rather than against you. If you do nothing, it's working against you. That's why I always say to people, do you want your plan or the government plan? And they'll say, well, what's the government plan? Why they say that? I don't know. But they say, (laughs) what's the government plan? I said, oh, that's easy. That's doing absolutely nothing and letting it all happen to you. Starting your route to retirement. Hello, everybody. I'm Dean Barber, founder and CEO of Barber Financial Group, your host of the Guided Retirement Show. You are going to love today's program. Backed by popular demand, my good friend, my teacher, my mentor, Ed Slot. He is America's IRA expert. If you missed episode 31 of the Guided Retirement Show, I'd encourage you to go back and listen to that first. That was an interview that we did with Ed Slot. And it is our most listened to podcast and most watched on YouTube. Ed recently wrote a new book, The New Retirement Savings Time Bomb. I'm going to talk to Ed about the book, the details that are inside of it. And we're going to be talking about how you can create a much more tax efficient and hopefully even a tax free retirement. Please enjoy my interview with Ed Slot. Back by popular demand to the Guided Retirement Show, our most listened to and most viewed podcast to date. Ed Slot, America's IRA expert. Ed, great to have you back. And uh, you got a new book out. I see there are one behind you. I have one here. It's actually autographed what? by what you. I, there? I didn't even know that. Wow. <laughs> see, I got mine's actually yeah, even autographed that. by the one and oh, only yeah. Ed Slot. So how you doing, buddy? Doing well? All right. We're still cranking it out, but everything's virtual. Maybe we'll get back into the real world one of these days. Well, we lifted our mask mandate in May here in uh, Kansas City. I don't know what you're going going out there at the East Coast, but uh, I think we're getting closer. Well, we're coming there in Kansas City. You know that's that's right. uh, October. Yeah, October, right? Yeah. Yep. And so there'll be so much brain power in Kansas City. uh, You know, as far as tax law goes, for that workshop, uh, it'll be crazy. Well, Ed, oh, there's, yeah, yeah. You, you got a lot of things going on right now. We have had more tax law changes in the last two and a half to three years than I think I went through probably in my first 10 years in the career, uh, in my career. And um, your team is staying on top of this. You're educating advisors in your elite IRA advisor group, of course, which I've been a part of for a long period of time. And there's a few things that I think we should discuss today. Um, I, I want to start with talking about your new book and uh, what was the catalyst? Why your, your original book was titled The Retirement Savings Time Bomb and How to Diffuse It. So you might talk about why you wrote that one in the first place, and then we can transition to what is in this new book that people really need to uh, understand and get to know. Well, as you know, and you talked about our elite IRA advisor group, people uh, watching or listening should know, that's uh, truly what it says, an elite group of advisors learning about all of these tax rules, getting this money out and addressing the tax issues. Now, uh, you may be modest, but uh, people should know that you helped start this group. You know that we just started uh, this year, 2021 is our 17th year. So it's been a long that's time. how long you've been in this program. Hey, I got to tell you, Ed, and, group. and I got to tell you, Ed, I still am learning I, every time we have workshops and, and even in between the workshops when you're sending out updates and things like that. I mean, the, the amount of information that's coming at us and, and if there's things that I still have to call your office for or email and say, hey, here's a question I haven't seen. Here's a situation I haven't seen. Imagine what the individual consumer out there is faced with when it comes to the challenges of the tax laws that surround their retirement accounts. Well, one of their biggest challenges is that the average advisor doesn't know uh, how deep these waters are. And as a sailor that you are, you know, uh, there's a lot underwater here. You know, I hear people say, oh, IRAs, what's the big deal about that? 
until you start helping people and you say, oh, this happened and that happened and tax law changes. So I realized this about 30 years ago and advisors like you came along and say, why don't we put a study group together? And this happened almost 20 years ago and we actually put the group together about 17 years ago and that's when uh, you started. And this is a group of ongoing education. That's some kind of commitment for our members. And you see the crowds when we go back live, you know, we'll get four or 500 members uh, at a meeting. It's unbelievable. But if you're watching and you're a consumer and you have a retirement account, you got to be thinking, I wonder, is my advisor, is he keeping up or is she keeping up on that? And the answer is probably not. Only about 1% of advisors, and I'm being generous there, uh, you might say, Ed, are you saying only 1% of advisors know anything about that? No, it's much less. I round it up. That's how <laughs> bad it is because most people don't know how deep these waters are. That's what you were saying, Dean. You were saying, you know, it's just the tip of the iceberg, the IRA, but everything. You, you, and here's proof. You're going to meetings now and taking education. And I'm not talking about these things you see where somebody attends something for an hour or 20 minutes and they call themselves an expert. These are hardcore meetings. I mean, they go from early in the morning to late at night, day after day. And like you said, the in-between, the updates we give you. Everybody on uh, watching or uh, listening to this program should be saying, I, I want an advisor that knows how to find every break in the tax code I'm entitled to. So I realized that 30 years ago when I came up with this concept of the retirement savings time bomb and wrote the original book about 20 years ago. And now I have the new version called the new retirement savings time bomb. So what's new? Well, Dean talked about it before. There's a few things that are new. First of all, an, one item that's new and the time bomb, by the way, that ticking tax time bomb, say that three times fast, that ticking tax time bomb is the tax building up in your IRA, in your 401k. Every day that goes by that you don't address it, you have a growing, building, snowballing, unpaid debt in your retirement account that will be owed at some point, probably at the worst possible time, back to Uncle Sam just when you need the money most in retirement. When the paychecks have stopped, when you may not have other sources of income like wages, and you're vulnerable to what could be future higher taxes. So the new retirement savings time bomb, why is it more of a problem now? Well, now we have a new generation of retirees. Dean, you might remember a generation ago, the retirees coming out had something called, and you may want to write this down, pensions. Pensions, P -E -N -S -I -O -N -S. yeah. P-E-N-S-I-O-N-S. <laughs> it was a check they gave employees even after they stopped working for nothing. Can you believe it? Yeah, people got these checks. And uh, at some point in the late 70s and early 80s, some smart people went to the corporate executives and said, you know, look at your balance sheet. Look at all this liability you have. You have to pay these people who are no longer working for you. You have to pay them for the rest of their lives. This is draining you. I have a better idea. And the corporate exec said, oh, I'm listening. How about we take the responsibility and the risk of saving for retirement off you, Mr. Corporation, let's put it on the employees. Oh, sign me up for that. That was called the 401k. So now we have this new wave of retirees that don't have guaranteed checks. Some do, but very few do. Uh, actually, the only pension type asset most people have is Social Security, and that's not nearly enough. So now they have accounts, they have 401ks, 403bs, IRAs, and all the risk and responsibility of saving and investing and tax planning for retirement is on their shoulders. Well, you so know, you Ed, that trend. Ed, also, and 20 years ago, people didn't have near as much money in these accounts because that they hadn't had a long to, to accumulate. Right, that's exactly my next point. So people had these checks, and so now they started building these accounts, and 20 years ago, not even even 10 years ago, look at the blow up, look at the accumulation in these accounts by constant contributions, and the stock market helped a bit, uh, quite a bit. So now we have what I call this ticking tax time bomb, because what's happening now, 
for many people, the lion's share of their wealth is sitting in a taxable, tax-deferred account like an IRA and a 401k. So they have all their eggs in one giant big basket of tax that's waiting to explode on them at the worst possible time. So that's what I call the new retirement savings time bomb. And now, as you said, it's exacerbated by constant changes and tweaking in the tax law. You know, it used to be years before you had a new tax law. In fact, uh, the uh, the original code that I, well, I don't remember, but, but from my time was called the tax, the Internal Revenue Code of 1954. And then in 1986, when they had that big 86 tax act. Tax Reform Act of 86, yeah. Yep. Yeah. They renamed the tax code, the, ta the Internal Revenue Code of 1986. So you had over 30 years where you really had almost no major changes. And then little by little, they came more frequent. And as you just said, in the last three or four years, look what's going on. You had the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Then you had the Secure Act. Then you had the Pandemic. Then you had the CARES Act. Now you have the two uh, stimulus bills, the relief that came on. Now they're talking about another one. Now they're talking about another retirement bill. Who can keep up with that? Well, actually, we do. That's our business, and we train advisors like you. So you're up to date on all of this. So all of this together uh, means more of your retirement savings are at high risk of future taxes if you don't have an advisor that's fluent in all of these changes. Ed, let's talk about some of the dangers and you say the worst possible time. Uh, I don't think that a lot of people really think about, uh, you know, you got the required minimum distribution that comes out. You've got the IRA that can uh, distributions during retirement that can cause more of your Social Security to become taxable. You got the required minimum distributions that can cause dividends that were otherwise tax free to become taxable, and capital gains that were otherwise tax free to become taxable. And now you got the uh, Secure Act, and that forces out the uh, ten year uh, distribution of money when it passes to the next generation. And so you, you wind up with almost like a tax on tax type of situation. And so you mentioned right. in your new book that, you know, you're, you're getting tax rates up in there in that 30, 40, 50, 60, even 70 percent. And and you're right. It, it comes at the worst possible time where some I've seen some clients where they didn't do any planning and they come in at the age of 70 or 71 or 72 and their entire Social Security check is going to pay their taxes and then some. And so. And they're like, how is this possible? Why is this happening? And that's your time bomb. Right, because planning wasn't done. Here's the big mistake people make, and I hate to say it, but uh, people think their 401k money, when they look at their statement, or their IRA, when they look at their statement, they think that's their money. But it's not all their money. It could be more of it belongs to Uncle Sam. Uh, think of your IRA, I hate to have you think of it like this, as a joint account with Uncle Sam, because essentially that's what it is. You have a co-owner. Only your name is on it for now. They don't want you to know that they're going to glom most of it. Only your name is on your 401k, but lots of people think they're keeping that money, so they have this false sense of security. Oh, look, even somebody says, look at that. I have a million dollars in my IRA. And I'm thinking every day that goes by, this this IRA is going to get eroded like crazy if they do nothing. Because if you wait and wait and wait and do nothing at 72, now you don't get your plan. You get the government plan. Now it's out of your control. At 72, you're forced to take that money down at whatever the prevailing tax rate is. And I'm afraid it's going to be much higher, especially on larger IRA balances. So the idea is to address this now. Don't wait. Like, uh, Dean, you just said people wake up at seven because that's what they do. They wake up. I bet a lot of people come to you. Uh, their triggering event for seeing you might be starting RMDs. Yeah, and, 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 get and the news. But, but I think that our industry has done a horrible job of training advisors, not you, but the, our, our industry has done a horrible job because we they've taught – advisors for years. I've been doing this for 33 years and going back to day one, tell people to defer the tax as long right. as possible. Right? Right, right. You know, I'm a CPA in case people don't know. I'm not an investment advisor or anything like that. So I come from the CPA school 
and they told you from the first day in college, your first course in accounting, oh, they beat you over the head. You were hardwired. Always defer, defer, defer. Put it off. Don't pay. Never pay a tax before you have to. In fact, they always say that, you know, if when you were a kid, your mother told you to do something and you said, not now, Ma, I'll do it later, you would have been an accountant because you were trained to defer, to put it off and put it off. Well, years later, I, I got to the realization and I became a recovering accountant because I realized this business of deferral is just building up a big tax bill at, for retirement when that's the last thing on earth you want. In retirement, you want to be able to sleep at night, not worry how high will taxes, how much will it take of my saved money. One of the things, Ed, that I think was probably one of the best uh, pieces of legislation ever written was by Senator Roth back in the 90s. And that legislation created the Roth IRA. And to me, the Roth IRA is the best planning tool that has ever been created by Congress. Let me talk, why don't you talk well, about the Roth IRA? What? And what that, Yeah, go ahead. I know you have a copy of the book. Go to... Uh, the table of contents, and you'll see uh, what I titled my Roth chapter right in the, the beginning. You see the title I gave my Roth chapter? Oh, you call it Congress Single Best Gift. Yeah, there it is in the book there. Yeah, page 222. Congress, Congress yeah, the Single Congress Best Gift. Single Best Gift. Now, I'm pretty tough on Congress in this book, but I agree. And here's a little trivia for you. Uh, Senator William Roth of Delaware, this July 2021, he's deceased, but he would have been 100 years old. Uh, that's his 100th birthday this July. So for your parties on the weekend, I think that would make you popular. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I did not realize he would be 100 this year. Here's another tidbit. He was the senior senator from Delaware at the same time. You know who the junior senator was? Uh, no, but you're going to tell me. Joe Biden. Oh, so did Joe support the Roth IRA? You know, I don't know, but here's a, another quirk. And, uh, you know, you're going to be really popular at parties knowing all this. I could tell already. Uh, another quirk uh, when, uh, so this came out, as you said, in the 97 Act, effective for 98. And in 2000, Roth was defeated for Congress. I remember saying to everybody, why'd you defeat the guy? He created the greatest account ever created for retirement. And this is why I call it Congress's greatest single gift, the ability to build tax-free forever for the rest of your life. Even after the SECURE Act cut back this so-called stretch IRA, you could still go out with your non-spouse beneficiaries like children or grandchildren 10 years. But the ability to lock in tax-free growth, accumulation for the rest of your life, Remember earlier I said every day you do nothing. You don't see an advisor and you don't address this. The debt in your retirement account keeps growing. Wouldn't you love it if that could go down and all the growth now you don't have to share with anyone, no Absolutely. matter what the rates are? Absolutely. As it should be. As it should be. And Ed, remember back in, two, in 1998, they came up with that provision where they would allow you to do a conversion from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA. Now, it's some income limitations back then, which have been removed, but you could do that conversion and then you could pay the tax over a period. Was it five years initially when they did that the it first was time? Four years. Uh, and that went away. And if you were watching me then, which I know you were, I, I encouraged everybody to do it. I had I a lot of clients. Wish. I had a lot of clients who did it, all of it. Was, you know, everything that they had outside of a 401k, they converted it. And they, you know, those people lived in retirement with a whole bunch of tax-free income. And it's amazing to watch. I had one client back then who got laughed out of his job based on my advice. Of course, he got the last laugh. He was, he, both he and his wife were teachers and they were close to retirement and, and they had each in their, uh, in their, in their, I forget, a 403B or 401K, whatever they had, about 500000 each. And this guy came to see me and I said, you know what, take that deal. This was 98, the first year, and convert everything. And he says, I can't. I'm going to make over 100000 They had that limit. I said, do it. If you, all right, you can't, you can't. He came back the next year for his taxes and says, I did it. I said, how'd you do it? He said, 
I, I believed in what you said so much. I took a six-month sabbatical so I would have my income go <laughs> below 100000 And all my teacher friends laughed at me. They say, you're going to give up all this income just so you can pay more tax? And you know what? Uh, this guy died recently with an $8 million tax-free Roth IRA. Amazing. And so did his wife. Amazing. $8 million, all tax-free. So people look uh, short-sighted. Yes, he paid some tax, but he got that four-year deal, which was nothing to him. So the, the uh, 500000 he had eventually grew over many years till about, and in his wife, he did the same investments in both of them, about $8 million bucks. It was unbelievable, all tax-free. So who got the last laugh now? He sure did. And then I couldn't do that then, but I could in 2010 when they were removed the 100,000 income limit and that's when you got the the flood of Roth conversions including mine and I told everybody to do it then also and they still gave you a great deal then you remember the deal if you convert in 2010 you didn't have to pay any tax in 2010 you paid half in 11 and half in 12 right I know I know you were at my programs right. then and I said everybody take that deal so I took that deal, and uh, I encourage as many people as possible to take that deal. So look where we are now. Anybody who took that deal in 2010, all the growth from 2010 to now 2021, tax-free for the rest of your life. You didn't have to share it with Uncle Sam. So the point is, yes, you have to pay some tax up front, but don't be short-sighted. You get something for your money. You get tax freedom for the rest of your life. There are no required minimum distributions. If you need the money, you take it tax-free in retirement. If you don't, it just keeps growing and accumulating 100% for you. I love tax-free. And I tell you, in this polarized country we're in, uh, even though I'm not traveling now, but when I traveled around, I always brought people together because I found everybody loves tax-free. Everybody. That's the secret. Bring people together. Tax-free is always better. Let's talk about uh, some of the tax proposals, Ed, that are out there from our new president, Joe Biden, and a few that we want to mention, uh, capital gains uh, taxes, uh, step up in basis, and some changes in estate taxes. Let's start with his proposals on capital gains. Well, uh, they want to raise the capital gain rate. I, I think it's a bit much, but uh, you may remember uh, in in the late 80s, under Reagan, he raised the capital gain rate, and he actually made it equal to the ordinary income tax rate at about 28%, and that only lasted for two or three years. The rates were the same, and everybody was okay with it then. We had a big boom then. <laughs> Right, right. Uh, well, and, so, and, and the 28% was the top rate under that Tax Reform Act of 1986 as well. Right. They brought the, the, uh, the ordinary rate down, the capital gain rate up, and that was probably a good, uh, a good negotiation and a good place to be. I'm sorry it only lasted a few years. And one of the reasons they did that, it stopped all the shenanigans of people trying to turn ordinary income into capital gain. It was all the same rate. Right, so, right. So, uh, they're they're trying to do something like that now, but at too high of a rate, I think. Wouldn't that 39%? So is ever. that what he's proposing, 39%? It's more than that, because if you add the 3.8% Medicare, you know, that uh, net Sir tax and income tax, yeah. it's about 43.4%. Then if you add state taxes for people in uh, high tax states like mine in New York, you're way over 50%. I think that's the tipping point. I think once you get over 40 percent, I mean, people will deal with it, but it's it's not good. Uh, uh, you know, and again, that was the first salvo. By the time I know we're recording this, but by the time somebody is watching this, it could be tamped down by then. I don't think it'll pass at that higher rate. I don't think anything and I don't have any inside information, just my gut. Given the 50 50 makeup of the Senate, anything extreme is just not going to pass. I don't think so. I think they have more negotiating to do. And the same way I feel about step up and basis. Yeah, see, I think I that's the, that's the most extreme, extreme thing that yeah. I've seen in a long time. Um, so say, You know how long? How you long? You know how long? <laughs> Two hours? A hundred years. A hundred years, okay. Step so, up and basis was enacted in 1921. 
And over those hundred years, every time there was a war, a financial crisis, or Congress needed money, the same arguments came up. Not the similar, not similar to today, the exact same arguments. Oh, let's get it from the rich people. You know, we need money. We have a crisis. And every time it was shot down, because when it got close to putting it into law, and this happened every time, everyone seemed to realize, or Congress finally realized, it would fall on all the wrong people. Homeowners, business owners, property owners uh, that have gains that a lot of it is just due to inflation. Look at a farmer or a small business person who want, first of all, it's hard enough to transfer, as you know, a business to the next generation. Most of them fail after the first generation. Then you have the pandemic, which has hurt so many businesses. Now, let's say somebody dies and they want to turn the business over to their children or grandchildren. Where are they going to get the money to pay the tax on the value of that business when all of that money is tied up in property, plant, inventory? There's just no way to get the money out. You'll destroy that business. I think that proposal is dead on arrival, and mainly because it affects the wor- the worst, you know, the worst uh, situation. And that's what Congress realized. You don't want this falling on homeowners. For example, take my mother, uh, or my father actually. Uh, he bought the house we grew up in in 1957 for 16,000. He died uh, years ago. And after he died in the uh, in 2000, early in 2000, my mother sold that that $16,000 house for $500,000. Do you think it was actually worth that much more? That's just what 16,000 was worth, you know, 50 years later. Right. You know, a lot of that is due to inflation. You can't tax that kind of thing. You know, they say they'll have an exemption, but what if one spouse? You know, who? How do you allocate it? The abuse. I, I think it's just. Well, and the, and, and the whole thing on the the whole thing on the step up in basis, which I think is, will kill it for sure, I hope, is that you don't even have to sell the property before the taxes are well, due. Well, that's crazy. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I saw that too. That'll never make it. I think they're calling it like an exit tax. Like it, you owe the tax without even realizing a gain. Right. So you got that's a farmer insane. farmer that passes away that wants to pass the farm down to his children and there's a huge gain on it, but they don't want to sell the farm, but they got to pay the tax anyway under this proposed bill. It's insane. This will never pass. You know, I don't know, but I think this is too much of a shock to the system. They're better off trimming around the edges, maybe raising the capital gain rates a little, and that's about it. But to to take away step up in basis, remember, you're hitting homeowners hard uh, you know, that's the, the bedrock of America and small business owners. Uh, so this is what's happened over the last hundred years. Every time they got close, they realized, oh, this is hitting the absolute wrong people. They think they're going to get the big billionaires. Yeah, they'll get them, but it means nothing to them. Right. So, so what's going on with the estate tax proposals right now? Well, uh, you know, I don't, I didn't see it in there at, at you know, uh, we thought they would take that 11 million and knock it down to 3 million, but that wasn't in the first proposal. Uh, there, there was no uh, adjustment down, but that could happen. I think that's more likely. I think that's uh, first of all, personally, I think the the 10 million dollar amount, which is inflation adjusted each year, so now it's 11.7 million for 2021 or 23 million for a couple. I think that's about the right amount. I think that covers. 99 points, like 9% of the people. And I think that's fair, and they should just leave it the heck alone. Every time they start tinkering with it, people get worried. They make uh, bad moves. Like even now, they're talking about messing with the capital gain rates, and everybody's talking about selling everything off. Right. I've had clients telling me, I've had had clients asking me the same thing, and I've had clients going, well, I don't think Biden, I think Biden's going to eliminate the this, this this amount of money that we can transfer to the next generation, we, should we just sell everything now and give it all away now? And I'm like, no, 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 no. Just hold on, right? Because you, you don't make changes based on proposals, right? You make changes right. based it, on what, com- what comes in, and then you think through it very, very carefully and make the right decision. Because there's most of the things that are in the tax code, Ed, you've taught me and you've taught the other advisors that are part of your elite IRA advisor group, there are planning techniques that can be utilized to get around these things, not to avoid them, 
but ways that you can minimize the pain that uh, Congress inflicts. Well, one thing I can tell you, speaking about getting around it, all they did, uh, if any of this passes, all they're doing, once again, Congress shooting themselves in the foot, is incentivize all of us to work with our clients to do the better planning we should have been doing all along. It's going to skyrocket the value of Roth IRAs and life insurance, tax-free vehicles. Uh, so, you know, it's very easy to get around all of this stuff, and uh, Congress doesn't see it. But I, I think, uh, first of all, that's the opening salvo. It's not even in the early stages. It's like embryonic stages. We don't know what this is going to develop right. into, and maybe nothing at all. I just feel... Uh, also, I feel not only that with a 50-50 Senate, anything outside of the uh, you know extreme is not going to pass, but also every day that goes by that they don't pass a tax bill, and I don't think it's happening for a while, uh, it's more likely that if they do anything, it's not going to be retroactive because too much time has gone past. We're too far into 2021 for anything enacted to be retroactive. If anything passes, it will probably be effective in 22, which means you still have this year to do some great planning with today's low tax rates that are known. We know what the tax rates are today, and they may be the lowest you'll ever see in your lifetime. This is the opportunity to start taking down that IRA, getting rid of that debt. Use it for Roth IRAs or for life insurance. Uh, matter of fact, I have a whole chapter in here on life insurance i call it the power of life insurance and i don't even sell as you know life insurance but i think it's going to be a fantastic it already is a great planning vehicle i use it myself for tax planning and now it's going to be more valuable when there's a there's no question whenever there's a rate increase a tax rate increase anything tax free becomes immediately more valuable right you know so one of the things that we do know that is in the new laws that I think is a big impact. I, I looked at it as the biggest money grab that I've ever seen in my 33 years in this business from Congress, and that was the 10-year rule on inherited IRAs. Why don't you talk a little bit about that, Ed? Because I, to me, I think this, here's why I think it's a money grab. Because if you think about who inherits money, it's obviously the children, sometimes it's the grandchildren, but the children that are inheriting money are in their 50s or 60s and are in their peak earning years. So they're already exactly. at a super high tax rate. Now they're going to be forced to take all the money out of their mom and dad's IRAs when they're in their top tax brackets. It's crazy. Which means, right, uh, right. It's all bunched into a 10-year period at their probably, I agree, their highest earning years. So it behooves most people to stop doing what you're doing. Uh, IRAs are not a good wealth transfer vehicle anymore. That's what Congress did. Let's just go back and talk about the stretch IRA for people who don't know. It's a made up term. It's not a real thing. It's just a term we used over many years, over decades to describe the ability before the SECURE Act uh, to name a beneficiary like a grandchild and if you name them, say they're the younger they are, the more years they can go out and stretch or extend distributions over their lifetime. So to take it to the extreme, a two-year-old could have gone out 80 years. So imagine that deferral building up and building up. What a legacy for generations. Well, Congress in the SECURE Act, and a little bit about the SECURE Act, in my 40 years of studying tax law, I've seen everything, but there's always been one constant. Whenever Congress names a tax law, you can almost always bet that whatever they name it, it will do exactly the opposite. Right. It says my favorite uh, one is my favorite one is the Deficit Reduction Act. <laughs> that was a good one. Look so at the deficit se se now. Secure stands uh, so for. Anyway. Uh, hold on. Secure stands for setting every congressman up for a <laughs> retirement enhancement. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it means you're not secure. When you see a tax bill called Secure Act, hold on to your wallets. They're coming for you, and that's exactly what they did. So Congress believed in the Secure Act because they needed revenue, as usual, doing uh, because of all their spending and everything else. Uh, they believed, they said, you know what, we're going to take a new tax. We believe retirement accounts like IRAs and 401ks 
should only be for retirement, not as a wealth transfer or estate planning vehicle to move those funds to your children and grandchildren. So we're going to make them, uh, we're going to downgrade them as a wealth transfer vehicle by eliminating, ending the stretch IRA and replacing it with a 10-year rule. And the 10-year rule says after you die, for non-spouse beneficiaries, spouses are exempt, after you die, your children or grandchildren have 10 years, as you said, Dean, uh, to 10 years to empty that account. Even if it's a Roth, they have 10 years to empty that account, and that's the end of it. So it accelerates all the tax into the 10 years. So what does that tell you? IRAs are not worth it anymore if you go if the point is to leave more to your children and grandchildren or other heirs and I would tell people uh, you know look at the signs if you're still in the phase where you're working and contributing it's probably a good move to talk to your advisor and say you know maybe I'll switch from my 401k to my Roth 401k at work uh, so I don't keep building up this eventual tax bill or maybe I'll start contributing to a Roth rather than an IRA. Start building up in tax-free territory because that will be worth more money when you'll need it most in retirement. Another thing I like to do, Ed, which you taught, is to do what I'll call methodical Roth conversions over right. a period of time and maximizing the bracket that you're in and taking a look and forecasting out, okay, what do we think my IRA is going to be worth when the required minimum distributions start? What's what's the tax rate going to look like because of that and Social Security and other income that I'm going to have? And then say, can we convert it today at a lower rate than what we know we're going to be in when the required minimum distributions start? And if the answer is yes, then you do it. And, and The answer is almost always yes, to given what our tax rates will be in the future. And you just gave away the secret to this book. That is the secret. The foundational principle of all good tax planning is exactly what you just said. Always pay taxes at the lowest rates. This is a pure tax rate arbitrage game. Think of the taxes like a stock. Buy low and sell high. Uh, it reminds me of that great saying of, from the old comedian, Henny Youngman. He, didn't re he just thought this was funny. But he, his one line was probably the best ta tax planning line I ever heard. He said, I, and this he said in the, either the 50s or early 60s. He said, I'm putting all my money in taxes. The only thing sure to go up. <laughs> he was right. That's yes. what we're talking about in the book. You can't be short-sighted. You have to look at the long-term benefit. That's the secret to this book and all tax planning. It's better to take a, a, a lesser hit now for a big benefit later, not only for you during your retirement years, but to pass on to your loved ones. Yeah, I think, Ed, you talked early on in our podcast here about the the CPA mentality that was drilled into you from day one was yeah. defer, 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 defer. My feeling is that, hey, as long as we live in the United States and we have money or make money, taxes are going to be a fact of our life, right? So it, tax planning is not about how do I pay as little as possible for 2021? It's how do I pay as little as possible over my lifetime? And right. that's where that's... your tax planning comes in. And you have to open your eyes and understand that, look, you're going to, as long as you're alive and, and you have money or make money here in the United States, taxes are going to be a part of your life. So how do you reduce those taxes over a lifetime, not in a given year? Over a lifetime. That's the key. You can't look at one event and say, you know, I don't want to pay tax now. Look at all I saved. By not pay, you know, uh, my dentist, I think a lot of dentists have this sign in their office, ignore your teeth and they'll go away. Uh, it's the same thing. Ignore the problem and your IRA will go away. It's very easy to bury your head in the sand. Uh, matter of fact, uh, the, the same comedian, I'm trying to remember the saying, had something. He said, well, when I read about the evils of drinking, I gave up reading. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he buried his head in the sand. Uh, you can't, you, yeah, it's easy to say, oh, look what I saved. I, and you're right, the accountants all say, don't pay a tax now. I want you to save taxes. But look what you're costing me later. It's like the same thing, ignoring your teeth. Take some of the pain now. Get the cleanings. Take care of them. Do the things you have to do. Because if you don't, the problem doesn't go away. It gets worse. They're called root canals and implants. And they're not only more expensive later, but way more painful. 
You know, Ed, it reminds me of I had a I, you know we've been talking about tax planning uh, for years and years and years. Obviously, working with you, but on my uh, radio show, America's Wealth Management Show, um, I had a guy come in and talk to me because we were talking about tax planning. There was some things that we had talked about in one of our educational groups that, that you teach, and he he came in and he slid his tax return across the table to me, and he said, "I just want to see how you can do better than this." And he had a tax bill of zero. And I said, well, that's fine. But tell me this, what are you living on? He said, well, I've got, I've got a bunch of money uh, that's in the bank and I've just been living off of that. And there's not enough interest to cause me to be in a taxable situation. I said, you're not taking Social Security. No, I'm not taking my Social Security yet. I said, don't you have any IRAs? He says, yeah, I got about $2 million in IRAs. And I said, I said, so when your CPA told you that you could have actually converted $90,000 of that IRA and paid only $11,000 in taxes, and then it would have been tax-free forevermore? Was there a reason you didn't do it? And he's like, well, we didn't have that conversation. I said, well, what about when he told you that you could have taken at least 25000 out of that IRA in that year and still paid zero tax because of your personal exemption, standard deductions, et cetera? And he goes, well, we never had that conversation either. And I said, well, okay, I can help you a lot. And, we're gonna, and so what we did was we forecasted what is R&Ds were going to start being at 72, and I showed him what the tax rates were going to be and how we could convert a major amount of that IRA over a period of years, then growing tax-free and got money out of that IRA. We diffused the time bomb, right? And now this guy's in his 70s and is happy. That's your story. Yeah. You know, that's a big point, too. People think if they have pay low taxes, they're, they're, they're missing out on taking advantage of the low brackets. You don't use them, you lose them. You don't get them back the next year because you didn't use them the last year. Right, right. You know, you've got to take advantage of those low brackets. You, you either use them or lose them. Yeah, and, and it's just, it all goes back. And Ed, I think something that, that gets critically missed uh, by the CPA industry as well, and like you said, you're a recovering CPA, so we can talk about this a little bit, is that most CPAs don't do tax planning. They do tax filing, right? Uh, they're complying with the law. They're helping people make sure that their taxes are filed and they're done properly, but they're not looking forward. And why? Because they don't ask the questions. They don't have the financial plan in front of them to say, oh, these are all the things that you have. These are all, all I knew about was what was showing up on the tax return. And so it takes a, a financial plan being completed first before a good CPA can come in and then, and then start to put a good tax plan together. Would you agree with that? Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, uh, I totally agree with it. And even though I'm a CPA, you know, I have to say, most CPAs are really just history teachers. They tell you what already happened after it's too late. So this is what got me to where I am today. I was in the same mode because that's how I was trained. And you'd sit there with a client, you know, you'd, you'd look at their tax situation and then you'd start saying things like, oh, you know what you could have done? Oh, if you only did this, right. you, know, you get this whole little coulda, shoulda, then they walk out all depressed. Then you don't see them till next year. And then you depress them the next year. You know what you should have done? This whole woulda, coulda, shoulda. Right. So it hit me. I'm constantly looking behind me. Uh, you're planning. It's a, a, a big difference between tax preparation, which is recording history, and ta- which is reactive, looking back, and tax planning, looking forward. That's where all the money, chunks, thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions in otherwise uh, in taxes that would otherwise be paid can be saved. You can save a fortune in taxes, even if you have a large IRA or 401k, if you, t- if you do the planning that's available. You know, the whole point is you have to make the tax code work for you rather than against you. If you do nothing, it's working against you. That's why I always say to people, do you want your plan or the government plan? And they'll say, well, what's the government plan? Why they say that, I don't know. But they say, (laughs) what's the government plan? I said, oh, that's easy. That's doing absolutely nothing and letting it all happen to you. Well, you don't have to choose that plan. You can get your plan, move forever tax to never tax, and enjoy a tax-free retirement while everybody else is getting hit with high taxes as they go up over the years. 
You know, Ed, I, I really, I think what you have done for the uh, advisory community, the financial planning community, and what you've done for the consumer with all of your uh, public television broadcasts has been, uh, it's priceless. It, it really is phenomenal what you've done. I want to encourage everybody that's listening or watching, get to the show notes and get a copy of Ed's new book. It's called The New Retirement Savings Time Bomb. You'll get a kick out of reading it. Not only does Ed write in a very educational way, but he also writes with some humor. As you could tell, Ed's Ed's a, really a funny guy, right? Not, not not like most CPAs. And and you'll you'll learn a lot, and you'll and you'll be able to read a lot. And if you'd like an opportunity to uh, schedule a complimentary consultation with us, you'll also find a link to schedule that complimentary consultation in the show notes. Ed. I know you're busy. I know that you, you've got you know, tons of things that you're doing, and I really appreciate you taking the time to join me here on the Guided Retirement Show to help educate America. Great to be here, and you're doing the same thing, and you've been doing it for over 20 years, and you were right what you said before. Most financial advisors are just there. They're trained to help you make money and make money, and that's good. But when it comes to retirement accounts, it's how much you keep that counts. I don't care how much they made you. If you're giving it all away just when you need it most in retirement, what have you done? You built a savings account for Uncle Sam, and he's not even your real uncle. That's right. It's Uncle Joe now. <laughs> <laughs> Ed, thanks. Enjoy your day. I'll see you soon, and, and uh, looking right, forward to thanks. having you and all of the other members of your Elite IRA Advisor Group here in Kansas City in October. Just like the song, we're going to Kansas City. Kansas City, here I come. See you, Ed. Okay. Well, Ed is never at a loss of words. I can tell you that. And in those teaching programs that I'm at, uh, six days a year, uh, Ed gets up on stage and he teaches in that same manner uh, for hours on hours on hours for six days. I encourage you to go ahead and get to the show notes, get a copy of Ed's new book. It's called The New Retirement Savings Time Bomb. And we have... Three of our advisors here at Barber Financial Group that train with Ed Slot on a yearly basis, just like I do, and we have in-house CPAs. We do the tax planning that Ed and I talked about in this program. And so if you'd like to have a complimentary consultation, you can find a link to schedule that complimentary consultation in the show notes of the program. Investment advisory services offered through Barber Financial Group and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. Starting your route to retirement. 